All right, Eagles fans, we're wrapping up this Monday edition of Locked On Eagles. Thank you so much to Emery Hunt of CBS Sports and Football Game Plan for joining me. Yeah, that was really awesome for me. Uh, Emery is such a good, genuine dude. He knows ball like the back of his hand. And the fact that he was my first podcast interview back in 2012, I had just started up a YouTube channel after I quit the football team. Couldn't really go along with the, the process of football anymore. It was grueling on the, a young me. I didn't like getting hit anyway, and I was a backup because I was like four eight, right? So, uh, you know, of course, in that way, it wasn't going to work out. But, you know, overall, Emery, I just started getting into podcasts. I'm this 14-year-old kid with a super high voice, and Emery was great, did multiple shows with me, and it's really cool to see how far we've both come. You know, he's on CBS, and Football Game Plan's a huge brand now, and it was kind of an upstart when I had him on the show back then. And again, I was just a kid, so uh, it was really awesome to have him on. That was pretty special to me. So hopefully you guys uh, did enjoy our podcast together on the show today. He's very high on Jalen Hurts. I'm sure you all were smirking from ear, grinning from ear to ear, watching my facial reactions when he talked. And look, I, I don't believe like Emery, all, I'm not all in that Jalen Hurts can be the guy I would, again, bank on more. He mentioned Anthony Richardson from Florida. I'd bank on a guy like that more being the Eagles' long-term answer than Jalen. But he, what he said as to why Hurts is going to become the guy, this is the same thing Gino and I said on last week's show. We did a scenario. If Jalen Hurts does become the guy this year, what lessons do we take away from that? And as Emery said, one of the big reasons he'll be the guy and one takeaway is that leadership, work ethic, and just a mindset, especially in Philadelphia, is so huge for a franchise quarterback. It is the most pressure-filled position in all of sports. It's the most important position in football, especially in Philadelphia, where it's extremely hard to play this position. What do you need? You need to be like Jalen Hurts. You need to have that short-term memory, that disciplined approach that you never get too high, you never get too low. That's what it's going to take. Of course, it's going to take more than that. He needs to develop the physical tools on the field product, but the mindset is absolutely there. The leadership is there. It's why when he got benched from Tua, a lot of guys, if you get benched like that in college football, like Spencer Rattler, I, I know he's in South Carolina now and people think he might bounce back. I think he's going to be done. A lot of times when you're a top quarterback at a top school and you get benched like that, especially at that kind of stage, you get benched in the national championship, that'll be in your head forever. We knew with Carson Wentz, he couldn't get over the monkey on his back that was Nick Foles until he finally did the Jalen Hurts pick, put him back down. He didn't have, I think, the mental discipline that Jalen Hurts has. That doesn't mean Carson Wentz was soft. Not many guys are built this way. To get benched in a national championship and then go on to, as Emery said, be a Heisman finalist the next year, that's vastly improved. Like He took that benching in stride and took it and used it in all the positive ways he could. That kind of guy can make it in Philadelphia as long as the other tools do eventually get to a certain degree. I don't think they're going to get to that level. It's why I don't think he's going to be the guy, but I have never once questioned that he has the right mentality for Philadelphia. It's why I want him to work out. It's also why guys in this locker room love him. It's why guys in this locker room also loved Nick Foles as well. It, it's what makes him so likable is that nothing phases him and they know they can get behind a guy like that. They know when things get bad during the season or when they get rocky that they can overcome with number one. It's a huge part of being a quarterback and it's a huge part of unifying a locker room. And I thought about this the other day when it comes to this exact topic. I think the reason why players maybe had issues with net, maybe not Wentz himself, but the presence of Wentz compared to that of Foles and Hurts, I think it has to do with team versus individuality. I think it had less to do with, because I don't think Carson Wentz was a bad guy. I don't think a lot of the quotes from that one story were true about him being selfish, about him not wanting the team to win a Super Bowl. I don't agree with that. I think that got totally miscommunicated. You know, so many core pieces of those teams over the years said Carson Wentz was one of the hardest workers. He was a great teammate. You know, but Malcolm Jenkins and Chris Long even said it was harder for him to relate to people. And I also think why maybe some players preferred Jalen Hurts or Nick Foles is because it felt more like a complete team when it was Foles or Hurts. It felt like more of a team effort that everything is on everybody, right? No one player is bigger than the team. And while that's not always going to be the case, when you have a franchise quarterback, he's going to be seen in a different light than the backup defensive tackle. 
But I think that was maybe part of it, especially coming off a Super Bowl win where you won it really as a team with Nick Foles. Is when you went back to Carson Wentz being everything to the team, where every move they made was centered around his presence, right? The coaching staff, who they picked, the weapons they brought in, you know, moving on from Nick Foles. Everything had to do with Carson Wentz. And that's the right way to go about it because you need a franchise quarterback. And it has nothing to do with Carson Wentz's personality. That's how it is with Josh Allen, who's a great teammate and leader. That's how it works with Josh Allen, as I just said, sorry, and Patrick Mahomes and all the elite quarterbacks. But I think that's maybe why some players love Nick Foles so much. And Jalen Hurts, too, is because, you know, they're great leaders, but it also feels like it's an entire team. And maybe that's because they don't see them as franchise quarterbacks. I don't think so. Um, but that, that was something I thought about is I think it had sometimes the issues some players had had less to do with Carson and more so to do with his presence and the way the organization went about things with him as the quarterback versus with other guys. But that's the way to do it. If Jalen Hurts is the franchise quarterback, guess what? When he gets that money, they're going to do all those things the same way. As long as the player is a good leader in the locker room, you're going to have to get over that. But I think that's maybe why some guys took issue after a championship win, doing it one way, then going about it another way once Carson came back. So I don't know. Interesting to think about for sure. But, uh, you know, Hertz has the leadership. He's made of the right stuff. But we'll see. It's got to come together physically on the field. Thanks so much to Emery Hunt for joining me on the show today. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Eagles. Make sure you subscribe on all podcast platforms Monday through Friday. We're free and available on YouTube as well and on Twitter at LockdownBirds and at DiBiase, L-O-E. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen is the Lockdown Fantasy Football Podcast with Vinny Lyre, who gives you 20-plus years of fantasy experience to get you ready for your drafts this week. It's free and available on all shows, as is, as I should say, pop platforms, as is Lockdown Dynasty. As always, thank you for downloading, thank you for watching and listening, and let's go Birds!